Hi guys, I am going to explain the link recognition and development of vaccine in this presentation. Before we start link recognition, I'd like to start with why we need to understand about this topic. It is an important immunological principle for vaccine development. Okay, here is the problem. There are three pathogens that give a big problem to children under two years old in adults over 65 years old. Strep pneumonia, which is a gram positive cocci, Neisseria meningitis, which is a gram negative cocci, and H influenzae, which is a gram negative cocci. Basically, these are uh, opportunistic pathogens. It means they are they usually stay in human respiratory tract without causing any harmful effects. But they give the problem in children and old folks because of weak immunity. Here is how they cause problem. They have capsule which is composed of polysaccharides that prevents phagocytosis by hosts and also the capsule is capable of evading host immune response. When they give problems, it is serious and lethal. For example, the strep pneumonia can cause pneumonia, bronchitis, otitis media, sepsis, and meningitis. Neisseria meningitis can cause meningitis. H influenza can cause bacteremia, epiglottitis, pneumonia, and meningitis. So to prevent these problems, we give vaccination to children and old adults. There are two types of vaccines for these pathogens, polysaccharide vaccine and conjugate vaccine. Polysaccharide vaccine is produced by using purified polysaccharides from different serotypes and conjugated va conjugate vaccine is produced by covalent binding of capsular polysaccharides to carrier proteins such as diphtheria toxoid or tetanus toxoid, which is highly immunogenic but non-toxic. But the problem is that if you give polysaccharide vaccine to children under two years old, the, um, the immune response is very poor. It means the children don't produce antibodies to prevent from those infections. Similarly, if you give polysaccharide vaccine to old age people, 65 years and old and above, antibody response won't last long. It means you can detect antibody levels for a short period of time, but it disappears soon. So for healthy young adults, uh, so you can detect antibodies for five years in some cases, but it can decline very fast if they have certain immunological or certain underlying diseases. For these reasons, the, the conjugate vaccine is developed and used it for children and old age. So what is the basic, basic difference between these two vaccines? We can explain based on how B cells are activated to produce antibodies. Polysaccharide vaccine is developed based on B cells activation by thymus independent mechanism. And conjugate vaccine is developed based on activation by thymus dependent antigens mechanism. If you can recall, I explained you in B cell activation video. In thymus independent antigen mechanism, polysaccharides, which are polyvalent antigens, are recognized by B cell receptors. B cells are activated without the help of CD4 T cells and secrete antibodies. Basically, antibodies are IgM classes. When only when activated dendritic cells are involved in BFF path or B cell activating factor is secreted. IgM can undergo class switching and IgG can be secreted. If you look at B cells activation by thymus dependent antigens, B cells are activated with the help of TFH cells after receiving two signals and various cytokines 
which are shown in red arrow. B cells undergo differentiation into plasma cells and memory cells. Here you can notice that thymus independent mechanism, no memory B cells are differentiated. That's why antibody response is poor in old adults and it doesn't last long, and very poor in young children. Moreover, B cells activation by thymus dependent mechanism is several times stronger than thymus independent mechanism. That's why we need to uh, give conjugate vaccine to children under two years old and old age above 65, 65 years old and above who have weak immune response. Okay, now let's move on to the principles of link recognition. The diagram shows you a virus and the dendritic cell. Basically, the virus has internal viral protein, which is shown in red color, and external viral protein shown in blue color. When virus is taken up by dendritic cell, process it, and present, to present the internal viral protein to CD4 T cell via MAC class 2. So T cell becomes activated and differentiated into affected T cell. If the T cell that is not activated by dendritic T cell, then it stays as inactive state which is shown in the green color. Now, same virus type of the same type of virus is recognized by B cell receptor on the B cell and internalize it into B cell. Peptides derived from internal viral protein are processed and presented via MAC class 2. Next, the peptide presented by B cell is recognized by TFH and again TFH activates B cell. B cell is activated and differentiated into plasma cells and finally secretes antibodies. These antibodies can recognize the same virus. If you look at it carefully, B cell is activated by internal protein, but once activated, it secretes antibodies and binds external viral code protein, but not internal viral protein. So the principle of link recognition is that for a helper T cell to be able to activate a B cell, the epitopes recognized by B cell and that may helper T cell have to be derived from the same antigen, that is, they must originally have physically linked. So based on this principle, the conjugate vaccine is developed. In the first step, capsular polysaccharide is harvested from bacterial growth medium and linked to carrier protein. As a carrier protein, you can use diphtheria toxoid or tetanus toxoid protein. In the diagram, you can see B cell recognizes lipopolysaccharide shown in blue color, which is linked to protein molecule which is shown in red color. When the whole antigen molecule, that is both polysaccharide and protein molecule together with B cell receptor are internalized and processed for antigen presentation via MAC class two. Now activated helper T cell comes and viral internal protein, which is you can see in red color, is presented to T cell. That's the start of B cell activation. T cell express CD40 ligand that binds to CD40 on the B cell surface. And T cell secretes different cytokines for differentiation of B cell. All these signals result in activation and differentiation of B cell. So Activated B cell become plasma cell and it secretes antibodies. Although B cell is activated by viral internal protein, the antibody molecules secreted can recognize polysaccharide because of link recognition. 
And because of the thymus dependent activation, B cells are differentiated not only into plasma cells but also into memory cells. That's why conjugate vaccine protects children and old age for a long period of time. Here are some of the conjugate vaccines available in the market. All right, guys, I hope this explanation might help in your seminar. Good luck.